I got the steering wheel all the way to the left like this, trying to go in a straight line, and it's shaking all over the place. There's a scraping noise. Great. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. In this video, I want to talk to you about wheel bearings, how they can go bad, and other parts that might potentially get damaged if you were to leave a bad wheel bearing in your vehicle, such as possibly your brakes. Of course, if you need any parts, order them from 1AAuto.com. They're going to get shipped fast and free directly to your door for easy installation. Let's start off by talking about what is a wheel bearing and what does it do. Now on your vehicle, you're going to have four wheels and each of those four wheels needs to be able to turn while you're driving down the road. The wheels are each mounted to the vehicle itself, but they can't be welded directly to anything because they need to be able to rotate. So of course they're going to be mounted to something such as a wheel bearing. Typically the wheel will be mounted to either a sealed or a wheel bearing hub assembly like this one, or the hub is pressed into a bearing and that would be attached to the vehicle's steering knuckle. So whether you have a sealed press in bearing that presses into the knuckle, or you have a bolt on bearing that bolts directly to the steering knuckle, they can both go bad similarly. And I want to go over how they can on your vehicle, depending on what type of bearing you're going to have inside of it, you'll either have ball bearings like these right here or roller bearings. It really depends on the bearing itself, but the ball bearings are the most common to have in the front. Now, if you were to look inside this area, which is essentially the bearing side of a sealed wheel bearing, looks like this, you're going to find that you have a whole bunch of those little ball bearings making their way around. They're supposed to be lubricated by grease. Now what can potentially happen with these is if the seal was to go bad for any reason, moisture could potentially make its way inside of here. If moisture made its way in, it could potentially make it so they start to rust up inside. When it starts to rust, the metal's going to get weak and start to wear down. It's going to cause noise and start to make a little bit of movement coming from the wheel bearing. Other than that, if you were having an issue with the bearings heating up due to the fact that there wasn't any lubricant inside there, it could potentially cause some wear as well. As metal tends to heat up, it's going to expand. When it expands, it's going to take up the tight clearances that are inside of the ball bearing area, and it's going to almost make it feel like it wants to bind up and seize in a way, especially if you go for long periods of time driving with minimal grease inside of this bearing area. Now, of course, this can be very bad. You don't want to have something in the front end that's holding your wheel on, overheating and potentially wearing out. When that happens, you could have several symptoms, maybe even something like this. Now, some of the symptoms that you might happen to find if you're having an issue with a wheel bearing might be something just like this. Maybe you have it up in the air. You grab onto the wheel and you've got a little bit of movement coming from it, whether it's from 12 and 6 or 3 and 9 like this. That generally means that you're having an issue with a wheel bearing, especially if it's in all directions. Of course, you want to make sure that you do check the whole front end when you do this. If you're shaking side to side and you have some movement, it could potentially be from your inner or outer tie rod end, or in some cases, even your lower ball joint. If it shakes going up and down, you might have an issue with the upper ball joint, which is generally up by your upper control arm or down along the bottom at that lower ball joint that I already mentioned. You might find when you're driving down the road, you've got a little bit of a humming noise coming from the front end. Now, when this happens, generally it'd be when you're turning to one direction or the other. And a fairly easy way to be able to diagnose which side's having an issue with the wheel bearing without actually lifting it up to check it first would be if you were steering to the left. You go ahead and turn to the left and you start hearing a humming noise. It would be coming from the right side. Why is that? Well, because when you turn left, Inertia is going to shift all the weight of the vehicle over to the right and it's going to load up that bearing and that's where you're going to hear the noise. If you try turning to the right, generally you're going to hear the wheel bearing noise coming from the left side. That's just the way it works. Another noise that you might potentially hear if you have a really bad wheel bearing might be a grinding sound coming from the front end. This is going to be in an extreme case. When the wheel bearing is really bad, it's going to make it so your wheel and brake rotor can move around quite a bit. When this happens, if the brake rotor is moving like this and it potentially hits up against your caliper bracket, it's going to start grinding into it and you're going to start hearing a really bad noise. At that point, you can cause some serious other damage, which we'll talk about later. Another noise that you might hear if you're having an issue with a wheel bearing could potentially be a clunking while you're driving over bumps. 
There's a whole bunch of things in the front end suspension that could potentially cause this noise, but a wheel bearing is potentially one of them. Something else you might happen to find is while you're driving down the road, the steering feels like it's a little squirrely, or it just doesn't seem like it wants to continue going straight the way that it should. So if you have an issue with one wheel bearing or the other on either side of your vehicle, it's gonna make it so instead of the wheels spinning perfectly like this, one could potentially be shaking around or even angling outward or inward. And that's gonna make your vehicle drift one way or the other. You might happen to find that you have an issue with one of the tires wearing unevenly, typically on either one edge or the other edge. Why would that be? Well, if that tire's kind of sitting off kilter because the wheel bearing lets it wobble around for some reason, it's tilting out a little bit while you're driving down the road, it's gonna wear out the inboard side of that tire. If it tilts in a little bit, same thing on the outside. Other than that, you might find that you have an ABS light on your wheel bearing or someplace on the hub, most modern day vehicles are going to have an ABS system. That ABS system is supposed to track exactly how fast each one of your wheels is spinning. They're supposed to be going approximately the same speed. Obviously, if you're making a corner of some sort, the outside wheel is gonna be spinning a little bit faster than the inside wheel. But of course, the computer does know to pay attention to that already. But if the wheel bearing's doing this, the sensor is probably not gonna be getting a good reading, especially if it ends up damaging the sensor in any way. When you have an ABS light and you have an issue like this, you also might have a traction control light that comes on. If you have both of these lights, you know you more than likely have an issue with one of your wheel bearings and you need to check it out. Now let's talk about other parts that could potentially go bad if you were to have an extremely bad wheel bearing, starting with talking about your brakes. Well, if that bearing is bad and your brake rotor can wobble around, it's gonna cause some uneven wear on the brake rotor, on the brake pads, and the rotor could potentially hit up against your caliper bracket in extreme cases. If any of this was to happen, you're gonna find that you have a brake pulsation. This is generally gonna be felt inside of the passenger compartment. Either you can see the seats shaking around a little bit or even the mirrors, or generally in the steering wheel while you're braking. Having a wheel bearing that has an extreme amount of movement can cause other damage to other parts as well, such as maybe suspension. On the front of your vehicle, you're going to have a couple ball joints, an upper and a lower typically, and you'll also have tie rod ends. If the wheel bearing's shaking around enough that the wheel can just jump around, it's gonna cause extra wear on any of these joints. They're really only meant to pivot. They don't necessarily need to keep getting jaunced around by vibration. So any vibration that's coming from the wheel bearing, not holding together the way that it should, could potentially cause damage with that as well. Now, not to mention, the bearing itself is going to have an axle that makes its way through from the inside where your transmission is, making its way through the bearing itself, all the way out to the outside where you'll have your axle nut. If the wheel bearing can move around quite a bit, it's gonna cause an issue where the axle itself also can move around a little bit. The axle is going to have a CV joint on the outer joint there. It's supposed to be able to pivot and spin at the same time. But if it can pivot, spin, and for some reason it's getting jaunced around, it's gonna cause some issue with vibration on the inside of the axle and cause some wear. Okay, it's time to talk about fixes. Now, of course, it really depends on what type of wheel bearing you have. If you have a press-in wheel bearing, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. But if you have a bolt-on, generally they're fairly easy peasy. What you'd wanna do is safely raise and support the vehicle. Remove the wheel. Remove and inspect your brakes. Make sure there's no damage and they're not worn unevenly. Of course, if you do need brakes, get them from 1AAuto.com. Once you have the brakes out of the way, you should be able to clearly see that wheel bearing. If it has an ABS wire, go ahead and disconnect that. After that's off of there, dismount the wheel bearing from your steering knuckle. To do that, you're going to have to take off the axle nut first. Make sure you break the axle free from the wheel bearing itself. And then from the back side, generally there's either going to be three or four mounting bolts holding it on. Once you remove those, just give it a couple loving taps and remove it from the steering knuckle. Once you have it off of there, compare it to your brand new one. Assuming it looks the same, make sure you clean all of your mounting hardware and reinstall it per manufacturer specifications. If you have a press and wheel bearing, like I said, it's a little bit more in depth. You still have to safely raise and support your vehicle. Remove that wheel, remove the brakes and inspect them. After that, you're gonna have to remove the entire steering knuckle from the vehicle and bring it over to a press to be able to press out the hub and then the bearing from there. Compare it to the brand new stuff and install the brand new bearing and hub. Once you've done that, you can put it all back together. Of course, whenever you do a wheel bearing of any sort, you wanna make sure that you get yourself a four wheel alignment. It could potentially change some of the angles of your alignment and it's gonna cause some tire wear. Now, I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it interesting. 
If there was something in the video that you think somebody else might find interesting, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me, it would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching. That could potentially do it. A lot of potentialies. Potentially. Yeah, this is potentially a lot of potentialies. Something else you might notice if you have a bad wheel bearing could potentially, if you potentially, potentially. Something else you might happen to find if you're having an issue with talking. <laughs> There's a mother. There's a mother.